Here we're going to look at a nice algebra problem from the 1997 German National Math Olympiad. So let's see the statement. Our goal is to find all real solutions x, y, z to the following system of nonlinear equations. So we've got x cubed equals 2y minus 1, y cubed equals 2z minus 1, and z cubed equals 2x minus 1. And looking at this, I think there's a big hint built into the structure of this system of equations. And that is this cyclic symmetry inside of the system of equations. So notice as we move from x to y to z, we move from x to y to z just in a different order on the right hand side. So notice x, y, z on the left hand side, x, y, z on the right hand side. So the fact that we've got this kind of offset cyclic symmetry really tells me that probably our solution is a very symmetric type of solution. And what would be a really symmetric type of solution? Well, that would be if x were equal to y were equal to z. But if we have that equation, well, we can just look at one of these and probably solve it pretty easily. So that's maybe gonna be our step one is to prove that guess, which is that x equals y equals z. And we're going to do that by first assuming that we have them in some order and showing that that order leads to them all being equal. Okay, so let's maybe see how we can do that. So let's maybe, like I said, without loss of generality, assume that they're in some order. x is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to z. Now, if we indeed find a solution where they are not equal, then our solution will be when x is less than y is less than z, and we'll, and we'll have to look at all different permutations of that. But like I hinted to before, our solution will be when they are equal, so we won't have to worry about that. So we have just assumed that we have them in this non-decreasing order, but notice that we can cube this inequality to give us x cubed is less than or equal to y cubed is less than or equal to z cubed. But now we can replace x cubed, y cubed, z cubed with the right hand side of this system of equations. So that tells us that 2y minus 1 is less than or equal to 2z minus 1, which is less than or equal to 2x minus 1. Now we can add 1 to all parts of this inequality and then furthermore divide this entire inequality by a half and that will lead us to y is less than or equal to z which is less than or equal to x. Okay and now we're actually in really good shape. So let's start with our assumption which is x is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to z and put that together with what we have ended up with which is y is less than or equal to z which is less than or equal to x and let's see what that gives us. X is less than or equal to y from here, but then y is less than or equal to z from this second one, and that's less than or equal to x also from this second one. So let's maybe just point out that this portion of the inequality comes from this which we derived from our starting point, and this portion of the inequality comes from this up here. But notice we have pinned y and z between x and itself, but that tells us that x must be equal to y must be equal to z. And furthermore, plugging this into our system of equations, we'll just use the first one, we see that we must have x cubed equal 2x minus 1. Okay, let's bring that up and we'll finish it off. So let's see where we are. So far we used some symmetry to show that x must be equal to y must be equal to z if we indeed have a solution to this system of equations. But that means that each of our variables satisfies this cubic equation. So we've got x cubed equals 2x minus 1. So what that tells us is that we need to find the roots of the cubic polynomial x cubed minus 2x plus 1 equals 0. Finding the roots to a cubic polynomial is in general pretty hard. And since this comes from a math contest where the solutions are generally pretty short, we know that one of the solutions to this equation should be pretty easy to find, which means we can probably use the rational root theorem to come up with one of our roots to this equation. So notice the rational root theorem says that the only rational roots 
will be plus or minus one. Well, how do you do that in general? Well, it's plus or minus all of the factors of the constant term divided by all of the factors of the leading term. But in this case, they're both one, so that's all you really need to check. It's pretty easy to check that if you plug minus one into this equation, you do not get zero. So minus one is not a root. But if you plug plus one into this equation, it is a root. So let's maybe put that here, plus one works. And we can just do that like without writing it down, maybe verbally. Notice that'll give us one minus two plus one, that's clearly equal to zero. But now by uh, root theorems for polynomials, that tells us that x cubed minus two x plus one must factor as x minus one times a quadratic polynomial. And in fact, we can guess and check this quadratic polynomial. You could also use polynomial long division if you wanted to, but I think that's maybe a little overkill here. So we know that the coefficient of x squared must be equal to one because we want the coefficient of x cubed to be equal to one here. Furthermore, we know the constant term has to be equal to negative one. And that's because we want the constant term to be positive one here. So we have negative one times negative one is a positive one. Then we have to just figure out what the coefficient of x is. And if you really want to, you can set up some sort of equation with an unknown, maybe plug a plus ax in here, multiply it out and get an equation for a. But I think you can guess and check pretty quickly just to get that the coefficient of x needs to be one. So like I said before, one of our roots come from, comes from this rational root theorem and our guess, and the other two roots will come from solving this quadratic polynomial, x squared plus x minus one equals zero, which we can do with the quadratic formula. So notice that'll give us x equals negative one plus or minus, well, it's gonna be the square root of b squared minus four ac, so that'll be the square root of five over two. So that gives us our three values that x can be. So x can be one, it can be minus one plus root five over two, and it can be minus one minus root five over two. And then furthermore, y and z must be equal to x. So that gives us three total solutions. One, 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 this, 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 and this, this, this. And I guess it's worth pointing out before we end that this is the golden ratio, which is pretty nice here. Okay, that's a good place to stop.